Sandra, what do you think would encourage more people to go into malaria research? What, what, condition, what changing conditions might make it a more attractive field? Um, well, of course, funding. <laughs> That's one of them. And I think coming from a developing country, we have very few research institutes that are looking into uh, things like malaria. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, it's um, Western countries that come in to sort of like help us out. So if the young people could be in, um, empowered to, who are, who are educated and are empowered to come up with their own institutes, I think that would be a great deal mm -hmm. of help, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Jonathan, do you have a comment on what would, what would improve uptake in your area? Yeah, I actually have a, a question for Bill, if I may. Um, mm, please. Uh, working at Microsoft Research, I'm very fortunate that I don't have to apply for funding. But I collaborate with maybe a dozen young researchers and old researchers, if I may, around the world who do have to deal with that. And the young researchers in particular have problems getting funding. And, and I know that your foundation has been held up as an example that has been funding young researchers more. And I, I'm curious if that's been a conscious effort, if it's something that you think that funding agencies need to specifically focus on young researchers, or if it's more that by changing the goals, the broader goals and what you're funding, young researchers, uh, as a side effect, get more funding? Well, I think it's a, it's a real dilemma in science right now, which is that the rich world science budgets are largely flat. You know, the United States budget has been a very key part of that. And when it was growing, not only could you fund the people who had done well, but it opened up some room for more novel things. As it flattens out, the temptation to just fund the people who are the proven researchers and not get much of the money down to the young investigators is very tough. So it's, it's a challenge. Everyone says, well, we should fund young people more, but there's always a question, which young, young people? Uh, you know, it's the, the having that taste to actually realize you know, who's got the, the best idea. It's something that really hasn't been cracked. It, it would be fantastic to be better. We have in our foundation you know, some money we set aside specifically for young researchers. We have a way that we don't actually look at people's resume when they look at, we look at the proposal. And we actually exercise some favoritism towards uh, science in developing countries because the, the, we want to participate and help build up the capacity there. So although we've done some things, I don't think we've really solved the problem. And I think it's, a, it's an increasing dilemma that could discourage young people from coming into the field. Ada, you spend a lot of time looking at young people's applications to do science. How I do you... thought that you say that I looked for money for a long time. <laughs> you still need but to look for the... money after a Nobel Prize? I still, oh. actually, it's even worse now. <laughs> Okay, that's a, that's a, I'm, sure that's, I'm sure that somebody's going to take that topic up in the discussions over the coming days. But uh, <coughs> how do you get money to young people who are well, un maybe unknown? I, maybe I can answer in a more global way. Hmm? Um, I have two points. One point is uh, acute need of new or improved antibiotics that very few foundations or companies are ready to to take. And in my opinion, the resistance to, ant to, to antibiotics of the pathogens is almost the most uh, frightening and the, most, the biggest problem of modern, of modern medicine. Even if we look at diseases like HIV and so on that are not bacterial. Because usually people are, are uh, suffering from HIV, from cancer, from things like this, but they die from pneumonia. From, from an infectious disease. And the, the death rate from infectious disease within a person that could have lived longer becomes larger. And we almost go back to the time before antibiotics, which was expressed as life, short life expectation. So I, I'm trying to take this stage to encourage companies, people, universities, governments, whatever, to look into this problem. The second is a question of whom to, whom to fund, fund and how. 
as, as it was already said, funding is now difficult and scarce, and I don't want to, to hurt the governmental agencies here, the ministers of, of uh, research, but they also have restrictions and, and a restricted amount of money. Maybe philanthropy can take, take uh, jump into it and not only fund a real compound that helps immediately and is really needed, I, I have nothing against that, which I just heard about, but also look for risky uh, uh, inputs. It means when, when a, a company, when a compound is already almost done, this is the fruit of a very long research. I think that the roots of, for, for the tree that makes these fruits have to be also looked at. And if it's young people or old people is a minor question. The question is how innovating the, the idea is. And even if it's very risky, if there is a chance that it will give some fruits.